Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cbrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 22 video. In this one, I'm finally going to be going over all of the new Future Stars cards in the future of the franchise program that dropped on Friday. I know I'm several days late on this video. I do apologize. I've been insanely sick the last couple days to the point where I couldn't even talk. So we finally come around enough where I felt like I can make this video slowly but surely. Because I am several days late on this video and a lot of you guys have already been grinding and getting these cards, I'm not going to take too much time on each one. I do want to take some time to talk about the circumstances surrounding this program that are different from when we had the face of the franchise program at launch. Basically nobody's building their team from scratch at this point in the year unless you just picked up the game so you're really looking for upgrades throughout this program rather than just most of the cards are better than what you have. In addition the power level of these cards are pretty interesting. They are generally a lot better than some of the budget options that were available before this program came out but their power level is still lower than a lot of guys you might see on God squad lineups if you have the live series collection done uh, a lot of those guys are still better than most of the cards in this program so really I would try to take the opportunity to take the cards that would upgrade your weakest spots in your lineup I know a lot of people that have the live series done we're having a bit of trouble with shortstop and third base so that might be an option for you obviously if you have Joe Maurer then a lot of the catchers in this program are gonna be terribly interesting to you as well and there's a lot of them but I just wanted to take the time to say that a lot of the cards in this program probably aren't gonna make your squad Squad, depending on who you already have so keep that in mind when I say a card is good or bad it doesn't matter how good I think a card is if he's not gonna crack your starting lineup you shouldn't take him out of the pack also if you were still wondering there are no more non sellable random packs you just get two choice packs for each division throughout the program first one happens at 150,000 XP with the AL East and the last one's at 475,000 with the NL West the second one of these obviously and this program is gonna last for about three and a half weeks all right let's start with the AL East I I think there's two cards you can rule out pretty much immediately. The first one is Brian Bello. This card is just not good because of his pitch mix. He only throws two speeds. He doesn't even have outlier on the four seam. He's basically got a relief pitcher pitch mix and not really outstanding control on any of his four pitches anyway. Just really not a fan of this card at all. You can do much better. And I'm not a big fan of this Arelvis Martinez card either. I would probably just play him at third base if I was forced to use him. He does have second base and shortstop secondaries, but uh, you can do better even in this program with defense at speed in the middle infield so this one's out for me the third best card in this division for me is this Josh Lowe card there's a couple cards like this scattered throughout the program you'll see there's a lot of like similar cards in terms of archetype uh, this one being a little bit worse hitter but tons of defense and speed in the outfield uh, Garrett Mitchell is another card that's like this that you'll see there's a couple other ones um, so if you're looking for that archetype of card I would really try to target like a division where you're not going to take, you know, another card for a different position. Uh, but overall, this card looks okay. I've said before that I'm not a huge fan of, you know, defense in the outfield this year in the corners. So uh, if I needed a defensive center fielder, this could be an option. But uh, when I get to left and right field personally this year, I'd rather have hitting stats. So uh, third best in the division, in my opinion. Then we got Gunnar Henderson, who I think is a really good card. This card would be shining bright in a different pitching meta. Um, traditionally cards with these types of splits are really strong at this point of the year because most of the pitchers are righties uh, this year has definitely been an exception there's still tons of really good left-handed starters people are throwing out there every game so uh, a little bit more unbalanced towards the right side isn't as good as years past but this is still really a great all-around card um, a little bum that you can't get him to diamond defense at any point uh, at shortstop but at parallel one he's gonna have gold defense at his secondary so that's pretty good uh, maybe consider this guy as a second baseman. Uh, we'll have gold defense at parallel one and decent enough speed. But really, I think the best card in this pack is Oswald Peraza. And this is where things get kind of tricky because there's several good shortstops scattered throughout this program. Uh, and that's why it's kind of hard to make judgments and tell you guys which cards to take, uh, not knowing your teams or anything like that. But this is an incredibly well-balanced card, um, almost perfectly balanced from contact and power both sides. Uh, parallel 2 gets you diamond defense at any of his positions. Obviously just paralleling him in general is going to increase his abilities all over the field because the speed's going to help you out a ton as well. Uh, this is one of the most well-balanced cards in the program 
and definitively the best pack, the best card in the AL East pack. Overall, I think the power level of the AL East division is kind of middle of the road. You could definitely just sell both of the cards you get out of here if you're already pretty pleased with your shortstop. So uh, otherwise, I would try to take Peraza, maybe sell one. Or if you really like both of the middle infielders you can get here, maybe Peraza and Henderson. You could also go Peraza and Lowe, I guess. On to the NL East where we get three more shortstops. <laughs> shortstops definitely loaded in this program, and that's why it's kind of hard to you know tell you guys which one to pick. This is another division where I can rule out two cards pretty much immediately. The first one is Michael Harris the second. This is another card that looks kind of like Josh Lowe from the previous division. The reason I'm saying you can rule this card out is because there is a Garrett Mitchell in the NL Central that is basically this version of card but much better and the NL Central is a much weaker division than the NL East in general. Just skipping ahead a little bit, the NL Central is not the strongest division by any means. You might even have trouble finding two cards you actually want to use from this division. So taking Michael Harris from the NL East I think is a mistake because you can instead take this Garrett Mitchell card from the NL Central which is just a better version of the same card and then you can use your two NL East picks for some better cards since that division is a little bit stronger. Back to the NL East, I'm ruling out Brady House as well. This card doesn't excite me too much. He's kind of just like a jack of all trades master of none and the speed uh, is just not good enough, especially compared to what you can get from the program, you know, from other cards that play the same position. Uh, the speed, you know, is lacking in the middle infield. It's going to hurt his defense a little bit. Another card that can't get diamond defense at shortstop as well. And I think his hitting stats are lagging a little bit behind as well. This is just kind of like Peraza, but, you know, worse in almost every category. He's got more power than Peraza, but everything else is, you know, not as good. On to two more shortstops in this division that I actually think are both really good. The first one is Khalil Watson, aka Jazz Chisholm the second. I really love this card on paper because of the potential it has with parallels. This card gets so much better if you use them for a really long time, specifically parallel four or higher. That's why I think this card is so exciting because if you really want to commit to Khalil Watson, if you use him for a bit and you find out that you like him a lot, uh, this card could jump way up in power level with enough use. Parallel 4 does take a while, but at that point, he'll have diamond defense and 97 speed. He'll also break 100 contact versus right at that point. Hitting stats are lacking for sure compared to other options, but overall, this card just looks like Jazz Chisholm to me, and if you're looking to stick with him for a long time, I think this card could pay dividends in the long run. But he's probably not as good as Bryson Stott in general. This card is maybe just statted a little bit better than Khalil Watson, you know, a lot more contact. Basically, what you give up with Bryson Stott is you give up power versus left compared to Khalil Watson and you give up a little bit of speed but otherwise Stott hits his diamond defense a lot earlier at parallel two that's a lot more manageable uh, especially if you want to move on from these cards in a month or so Stott's also better left on left in my opinion because I'd rather have the contact than the power and he's still got enough speed to get it done at shortstop as well overall I think Bryce and Stott's just a little bit better than Khalil Watson in my opinion and if I had to take a shortstop from this division it would be this guy and then finally we have Brett Beatty who tons of people People have been raving about on social media apparently this card rakes I haven't personally used him yet but just going off what people are saying they saying his swing is amazing and he has tons of pop this is a left-handed third baseman a little bit of a mini George Brett possibly from this program third base is another position that people have been looking for new cards to try so taking Brett Beatty is definitely an option here one of the better cards in this division in general you might just be taking one of these cards and selling the other one or just selling both of them again it depends on your team me personally I'm still pretty happy with Pujols at third base, so I think I'm going to take Bryson Stott and sell the other one, but my second pick would probably be Brett Beatty, and my third pick would obviously be Khalil Watson. All right, on to the AL Central, which is an exciting division because I think it's probably the most stacked division overall. Unironically, all five of these cards are really strong. Starting with Yoelki Cespedes, this is an interesting card. He's kind of a jack-of-all-trades master of none as well in the outfield, just I wish he was a little bit more static defensively or offensively, but he's kind of right in between. I guess you could consider him a five-tool player, but the tools aren't all the way maxed out, if that makes sense. This card will be good in the outfield, but I know outfield's stacked, and this card just doesn't really bring anything too particularly strong to the table. George Valera looks like a really strong outfielder as well. I definitely want to play him in the corners with that speed. Luckily, he's a right field primary and just tons of power versus right. Uh, kind of bringing up the same thing I talked about with Gunnar Henderson. This card would be a lot stronger in metas of years past, but right now, 
kind of a little bit of a drop off just because there's so many good left handed starters that people are using. I would recommend not platooning this guy. I know he looks like a platoon option, but honestly, 8690 is perfectly fine versus left. I wouldn't really blow one of your program picks on a platoon guy. So I think if you're going to go out of your way to take George Valera from this division, then you should try to start him every at bat. All right, on to what I think are the top three cards in this division. The third one would be Nick Prado. This card is basically Lightning Anthony Rizzo with 30 more speed and diamond defense at first base. Super glad I grinded for Anthony Rizzo just for this card to come out a month later. Feels good. But yeah, not much to say about this card. This is a really strong card, but unfortunately, a lot of people already have their first baseman in Frank Thomas. And if they don't, there's a better first baseman in this program later on. So it's really hard to fit this card in. He really wouldn't be that terrible in the corner outfield, to be honest, if you really wanted to play him there. And I guess this guy could hold down first base until you get the next first baseman, which we'll talk about later. But otherwise, kind of hard to find a spot for this guy. All right, on to Jackson Job, who I think is maybe one of the most slept on cards in the program. I haven't heard a lot of people really excited about this card, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because he seems like he only has two speeds, but there's a couple things that that really, really excite me about this card. First of all, I love cards with slider primary. Uh, I think it really opens up a lot of sequencing compared to cards that have slider as a secondary pitch. Additionally, this card slider is super strong. Uh, 92 control and 99 break. You can see he's also got 94 break on his circle changeup. Um, and I love the four seam, two seam dynamic as well. Overall, I think this is a really solid starting pitcher card. Uh, a lot better than a lot of other options that people have been using. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was saying that starting pitching, there's just kind of a lot of cards that are just like middle of the road. Uh, don't really excite you, but just kind of eat innings. Uh, I think this card is a step up from a lot of those guys. So uh, if you're looking for starting pitching improvements, I think Jackson Job is definitely better than a lot of other options in the game right now. And finally, we have Austin Martin, who I think personally is one of the best cards in the entire program. Uh, this card is basically Cattell Marte, but only hits right-handed. He's got a little bit better secondaries as well because he's got third base as a secondary. Uh, but even if you are just looking for a bench option, this is an incredibly strong bench card. You know, he can hit against both sides, but especially against lefties, he's going to be at 118.81, which is really good. Great speed off the bench as well. Um, just tons of secondaries. I really love this card. If you're using a budget squad or if you don't have the live series done, I think this card is a must-have starter. Um, he's going to play somewhere for you. And considering the prices these cards are at already, they're already dipping down to like under 30k. Uh, this is just a must cop in my opinion. One of the best cards in the entire program for sure. So overall from the AL Central, my picks are going to be Jackson Job for the rotation and Austin Martin for the starting lineup. But otherwise, all five of these cards are pretty good and just take who you think is going to help your team the most. And on from probably the strongest division to probably the weakest division, we finally run into our first catcher in Henry Davis as well. I mentioned earlier there's tons of catchers in this program. Uh, so if you already have Joe Maurer, I would probably just skip over all the catchers. Uh, but if you're looking for a new catcher, you can find one in this program, but obviously you're probably only going to want to take one of them. So keep that in mind. This is probably a good division to do it because it's such a weak division, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get there. First off, we got a couple slappy boys in this division. The first one is Pete Crow Armstrong. This is honestly a pretty solid card. I just really want a little bit more power from my outfielders right now. For me this year, oftentimes the game feels like I need to have power because a lot of the runs that are scored are on home runs. So uh, a card like this just, I don't know, when I only have three outfield spots, this just doesn't excite me a ton. Again, I've talked about earlier that I really only care about outfield defense and center field this year too, so a card like this just doesn't get me excited really, but it could all change depending on what you value. If you really want an incredibly strong uh, outfield defense, this is uh, probably a great uh, option for you, especially in the corner outfield. He just comes stock with diamond defense and great speed, so... Could be an option for you, but I just want more power. And same story with Mason Wynn, although this is a shortstop card. This is another card that's, you know, okay, but just not the kind of card that I'm looking for personally, especially with how many shortstops you can get in this program. Uh, you can even already get shortstops that will give you what this card gives you. Uh, that being diamond defense at shortstop with great speed. You know, we've already gone over Oswald Perez, uh, Khalil Watson, Bryson Stott. All of those will give you, you know, kind of the archetype that this card is, 
but with better hitting stats. So overall, I think this is maybe one of the worst cards in the program. I would not take Mason Wynn. Bit of a sleeper card here in Austin Hendrick. If you're looking for tons of pop and you play below Legend difficulty, I don't know if I would use this card on Legend because the contact's just not good enough, but... Uh, this is kind of similar to the cards we talked about earlier, you know, Jack of all trades, master of none, but he is master of power, so that brings him up a little bit, you know, pretty average slash solid across the board, and then brings, you know, above average power for sure, so this is a really solid corner outfield option. Probably not going to start for me, because at the end of the day, you do only get three outfielders, but this is a really solid card, I think. Next, we've got Henry Davis, who, like I said, is the first catcher we weren't into in this program. I think if you're looking for a new catcher ASAP, I would probably take this card out of the pack, just because, you know, like I said earlier, there's a ton of catchers in this program, but this is the first one. This is also a really weak division card power level-wise, so snagging a catcher from here can kind of get that position taken care of. This card looks pretty solid, honestly nothing really to say about him. I wish he had pop time quirk, but otherwise looks great defensively. You know, the blocking is good enough and has a cannon of an arm and really well balanced at the plate as well. So this is a really solid catcher option for sure. And then finally, we've got Garrett Mitchell, who I think is the best version of this type of card in the entire program, as I mentioned earlier. You know, just an absolute speed demon with amazing defense in the outfield. I think he brings all that to the table, plus a little bit better hitting than you'll get from the other cards that are like this in the program. So overall, I think he's probably the best card in this division for that reason. And if you're looking for an outfielder like this to really cover tons of ground in center field, uh, could be the man for you. Additionally, can get up to 99 speed if you want to go all the way to parallel five with them, which is pretty cool. Overall, I think this division's pretty weak, and personally, I'm probably going to be selling both both cards so that's just my opinion but hopefully the analysis of each card individually maybe helped you guys out and uh, maybe you want to pick up one of these cards based on what I said on to the AL West which is a huge step up this card is maybe tied with the AL Central for best division in the entire program so I think it's perfectly viable to just sell your NL Central cards and pick up a catcher from here instead because I do think Langliers and Corey Lee are better than Henry Davis let's take a look at it Corey Lee worse contact versus right than Henry Davis but everything else is pretty close he's got better defense this is again just a really solid catcher option interesting secondary positions as well and then we've got Shane Langliers who I think is the best catcher in the entire program for this card you're basically dropping a little bit of contact versus left for diamond defense best catcher in the program like I said in my opinion but in an absolutely stacked division so once again I would consider selling cards from other weaker divisions and maybe picking this guy up if you're looking for a catcher on to the two pitchers from this division first off is Reed Detmers this card obviously looks super Super solid. Um, I love the pitch mix. I love that he's got eight miles an hour difference between his cutter and four seam. Max break on his slider and almost max break on his sweeping curve as well. Sweeping curve is not a pitch you see on a ton of pitchers very often on this game, so it's pretty unique for him. Extremely slow compared to his other pitches too, which I think makes it really strong. Overall, I think this card is really, really good and obviously a step up from the other starters we've been using in the past. Obviously, you know, I was a big fan of 91 Madison Bumgarner before. I think this card's basically just a direct upgrade from that card. Honestly, there's just a ton of pitchers in this program in general that are a step up from the baseline before. Also pretty excited about this Matt Brash card. He's going to be a little bit wild. You know, his walks per nine isn't too high and his pitch control on all of his pitches isn't too great as well, but his stuff looks super nasty. He's got 99 break on the slider and we've learned from Randy Johnson this year that slider slurve together is a really difficult dynamic to hit because they look the same out of the hand but they go completely different directions vertically um, so I think this guy's pitch mix is going to be really strong uh, no outlier on the four seam but the stuff just looks nasty again another card that could improve your rotation immediately if you've been using some budget pitchers so far this year and then we got Justin Foscue who I think is one of the most exciting cards in this program between the secondary positions and the amount of power he has uh, first of all, he's a primary second baseman. Uh, this card brings power to the position of second base that traditionally has a really hard time finding it. Um, additionally, I love that he's got more contact versus left, again with the type of pitchers that people are using. A um, couple knocks on this card, his speed is the biggest one. Uh, probably would never play this card at shortstop even though he has a secondary position because he's just too slow for it. Um, you can get away with it a little bit more at second base with his primary, especially since he's going to hold gold defense there stock. Uh, but this is also a really super strong option at third base. 
because the speed doesn't hurt you at all defensively. This is a card that brings a ton of power to the table at a position of second base that traditionally struggles to find it, and you can also play him at third base just for a thumper as well. I think this card is super, super good. Honestly, from this division, I think I'm going to try to pick up four cards. I'm going to use stubs from other divisions, so from the packs, I'm going to take Reed Detmers and Justin Foscu. And then I'm going to try to buy Shang Langliers and have him as my new starting catcher. And I'm also going to buy Matt Brash for the rotation. So this is probably, honestly, the best division. All of these cards are super good. On to the last division, which is the NL West, where I think there are two cards that are clearly stronger than the other ones in the division. So this is going to be a pretty easy one. First off, this Blake Walston card doesn't excite me at all, mostly because he looks exactly like Robbie Ray cards. And I think Robbie Ray cards are always terrible. So... Um, his pitch mix is basically exactly the same. He's got the same amount of velo. Uh, just by looking at the card, I can just tell this card's bad. So I would not take him under any circumstances. Then we got a couple more catchers. Luis Camposano. Again, all these catchers are kind of blurring together. They're all, you know, pretty close in hitting stats, pretty close in fielding stats. And uh, because I want to go with Shang Langliers, I probably wouldn't take this card. But if you're a Padres fan or, you know, you're just looking to try a new catcher, there's tons of options in this program. Uh, I would maybe try to buy this card though because the two cards you can take out of your packs are just so much better than the other ones. And again, same with Joey Bart, not much to say, tons of catchers to try, you know, try to find your guy and move on from there. Alright, the two best cards in this division, first one is Michael Taglia, this card is Josh Bell on steroids, this is maybe one of the best cards in the program as well. Switch hitter, insane amount of pop and diamond defense. I mentioned earlier that Nick Prado was kind of like lightning Anthony Rizzo with diamond defense, well this card is like switch hitting lightning Anthony Rizzo with diamond defense. This card's insane. This is probably one of the best first baseman options in the entire game if you don't have Frank Thomas. This card is a must cop in my opinion, if nothing else for a switch hitter off the bench. One thing to note though is that he is six foot five. Some people don't like hitting with huge strike zones, so that's something to keep in mind, but on paper this card looks completely insane. And speaking of completely insane, we are ending this with Bobby Miller, who is one of the best cards in the program as well. This card is basically DeGrom with Outlier. You know, uh, Live Series DeGrom doesn't have Outlier this year, so uh, same pitch mix as DeGrom, but even better because uh, he's got Splitter instead of Changeup and Sinker instead of Two Seam. Uh, there's going to be anywhere between a 7 and 5 mile an hour difference between your Four Seam and Sinker on this card as well. Uh, card stuff is just completely nasty. One of the best pitch repertoires you can have in the entire game. Uh, obviously going to be some control issues. I think the pars on this guy's pitches are going to be pretty big. Uh, so keep that in mind. But if you take a look at the pitch break, man, uh, this guy's stuff is just going to be disgusting, especially considering he has outlier on his four-seam fastball. So uh, one of the best starting pitchers in the game, I think, and an obvious choice from the NL West division. So obviously from this division, I'm going to be taking Michael Toglia and Bobby Miller, and I'm going to be pretty confident in those picks and just moving on. So that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Let me know down in the comments who you are going to take or who you have taken so far, if any of these cards have surprised you that you've grinded for. Again, apologies that this video came out several days late. I've just been so sick. So if you made it to the end of the video, uh, appreciate you. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.